It was a battle in the trenches on day 10 of Denver Broncos training camp, and we even had our first fight. Hello everyone and welcome to Denver Broncos Syndicate, part of the Sports Syndicate family of channels where we are dedicated to bringing you content about our favorite sports teams. I am your host, Gage Madrid. Before we jump in, if you could just leave a like on this video as well as subscribe and ring the notification bell, that would be awesome. We are trying to reach a thousand subscribers by the beginning of the regular season and your likes really do help push this content out to fellow members of Broncos country. After a relatively uneventful day nine which was mostly walkthroughs the denver broncos were back in full pads for day 10 of training camp at uc health training center this was probably the most intense practice that the broncos have held to this point in camp the team ran about 75 plays in 11 on 11 drills today and they were going pretty close to full game speed following a special teams period to start the day the team moved into a one-on-one -on -one drill with wide receivers and tight ends versus the dbs the first rep of the day was Jim Jerry Judy versus Pat Sertan. Judy ran a slot fade route and was initially able to gain a step on PS2. PS2 didn't panic though and was able to show off fantastic closing speed and recover late in the play. By the time the ball got there, PS2 had pretty good coverage on Judy, but the ball still slipped through Judy's fingers and should have been a catch. It was a great rep by PS2, and although Judy did have a rough start to practice, he was able to rebound, which we will talk about later. The best play during one-on-ones actually came from an unlikely player, and that was wide receiver Seth Williams. On a pass deep down the right sideline, Williams went up and mossed rookie corner Fayon Hicks. Williams needed that as he has been pretty quiet to this point in training camp. Other players such as Montreal Washington, Caden Davis, Jalen Virgil, and Darius Shepard were also able to make nice plays in one-on-ones. The Broncos then moved on to team periods and I would say that today was the cleanest practice so far. The only sloppy plays were a couple of botched snaps under center. One was from Lloyd Cushenberry and the other was from Luke Wattenberg who actually saw some snaps with the first team offense today. The other sloppy play was a false start on Eric Saubert. Since the team was in full pads today, I was paying real close attention to the trenches because this is their opportunity to showcase their stuff. Players who stood out multiple times on my notes today included Draymond Jones, Quinn Miners, Alex Singleton, and Malik Reed. On the opening play, Quinn Miners absolutely leveled Mike Purcell, and it sprung open a cutback lane to the outside for a nice gain from Javante Williams. Draymond Jones gave the Broncos offensive line plenty of fits today, especially Dalton Reisner. There were multiple times where 93 was wrecking shop in the backfield, both in the run game and as a pass rusher. Malik Reed, who has had a pretty quiet camp to this point, also had a nice day today. Reed had one rep where his pressure forced Russell Wilson to step up in the pocket where he was able to find Jerry Judy open on a crossing route. Alex Singleton is another player who has had a pretty quiet camp, but he delivered the goods today when the pads came on. He had multiple plays where he clogged up the running lanes and also had a nice rep in man coverage against Eric Saubert. The team then moved into an extended red zone period. Standout play plays include Russ finding Jerry Judy wide open down the right sideline for a touchdown on what appeared to be busted coverage from Isane Bassey and Jamar Johnson. It was a nice way for Judy to redeem himself after having the earlier drop. Other players who cashed in during the red zone drill include Trey Quinn from Josh Johnson and Montrell Washington from Brett Rippon. Montrell Washington is a guy who continues to have a very strong training camp. Although he was mostly drafted as a return specialist, at this point you have to imagine he's going to see quite a bit of snaps on offense this season. It seems that the Broncos may have found themselves a hidden gem in the fifth round with Montreal Washington. The team then went on to simulate a two-minute situation. Both the first and second team offenses drive stalled, leading to Brandon McManus field goals with less than five seconds left on the clock. One player who stood out for the wrong reasons today was defensive lineman McTelvin Ajim. He had some struggles in the early portion of practice going up 
up against the second team offensive line, and he eventually let his emotions get the best of him. After losing a rep, he ended up getting into a dust up with the guard Ben Braden. Ajim lost his cool and ended up throwing a couple of punches at Braden. As you can imagine, head coach Nathaniel Hackett was not pleased. He said that no matter what happens, you simply cannot throw a punch. Both players were briefly pulled from practice, but they eventually talked things out and cooler heads prevailed. Ajim also had a redeeming play later in practice as he was able to get his hands up and deflect a Russell Wilson pass. It appears that the issues with Ajim and Braden are now water under the bridge. On the injury side of things, the team was delivered a bit of a rough blow. Natani Moody did not practice today and it was later announced by the team that he is being evaluated for a knee injury. Moody appears to be the favorite to be the swing guard for the Broncos this season and it would be a massive blow should he miss any game action. It was also announced that wide receiver Tyree Cleveland is going to miss four to six weeks with a throat injury. This not only likely ends his preseason but also possibly ends his tenure with the Denver Broncos. So definitely not the greatest of news for either one of those guys. There was some positive news on the injury front as both Kendall Hinton and Caden Stearns returned to practice after missing time with various ailments. Cortland Sutton was also examined by trainers for a possible ankle or foot injury, but everything checked out well there and he later returned to practice with no issue. So no concern there as far as Cortland Sutton's concerned. The team will have an off day tomorrow before returning to action on Monday morning. The team will practice solo on Monday through Wednesday before hosting the Dallas Cowboys on Thursday, August 11th for joint practices at UC Health Training Center. This will also be the final training camp practice open to the public this season, so if you have yet to make it out to training camp this season, your opportunities are dwindling fast. Be sure to leave a like on this video, as well as subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss when we upload. And while you're at it, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Gage Madrid NFL for even more Broncos training camp coverage. And for now, this has been another episode of Denver Broncos syndicate i am your host gage madrid saying peace out and let's ride